What do yellow ducks, red beavers, blue turtles, and green frogs have in common? Find out the solution to this puzzle today on Life's Potluck Buffet. I'm John Pauls. Thanks for joining me. On January 10th, 1992, a container ship lost several containers in a storm in the North Pacific Ocean near the International Dateline. In those containers were 28,800 bath toys bound from Hong Kong to Tacoma, Washington in the United States. The bath toys were marketed under the name Friendly Floaties. And Friendly Floaties helped solve some mysteries themselves. Because some scientists in Washington who tracked flotsam, and flotsam, for those of you who are not familiar with the term, flotsam is stuff that has fallen off of ships. You may have heard the term flotsam and jetsam, and jetsam is used to describe things that have been purposefully thrown off of ships. But flotsam is stuff that, well, just falls off the ship. Nobody made it fall off the ship. Not nature made it fall off the ship or something else, but not human intentions. And the, the, the distinction is important in shipping. We like to talk about shipping sometimes on Life's Public Buffet, but the, it, because the, mm, there are different rules that govern if something is intentionally thrown off a ship um, and um, if something it just falls off a ship. One can be claimed by the owner. The other one is, you know, uh, the property of whoever finds it. So the oceanographers who... Um, were working and are working in Washington State, um, in the United States, heard about the loss of the 28,800 yellowed plastic ducks, red plastic beavers, blue plastic turtles, and green plastic frogs. And really had a unique opportunity because of the sheer number of flotsam, the amount of flotsam that was out there. You know, normally, if scientists are doing research and they put out, you know, 100 buoys to float around to see where the cur- ocean currents take them, that's, a hun- you know, that's, they're, they're only going to recover a few buoys. When, they, when you release 28,800 Floating toys, and these toys are very special insofar as they apparently didn't have holes in the bottom, so they didn't really take on water. So the chances of them staying afloat were better than maybe your average rubber duck. And so the scientists expected hundreds to wash up ashore, but the question is, where would they wash up ashore? And that question got answered over the next. 15 years as the friendly floaties would be found washed up on shores, not just where you might have expected if you didn't know ocean currents. And this is the point, is that these toys allowed scientists to understand ocean currents like they've never understood ocean currents before. Because these toys... um, Some of them got up to the um, Arctic and got frozen in water. And then um, when the Arctic ice melts in the summer, they got released and ended up in places like Scotland or in Newfoundland and Canada. And they got caught in the Pacific gyres and went the other direction and ended up in places like Australia and... (laughs) Uh, you know, back in uh, East Asia, uh, where they had originally started, uh, although uh, I don't think they showed up in Hong Kong Harbor. Well, that would be really 
I don't know. Is that freaky or cool or both? Yeah, that would be cool if may, and maybe it was some day. If uh, if anybody knows about this and if any floated back to Hong Kong Harbor, that would you know just like. I feel like those would be the most valuable ducks. Apparently, some of them have gone up for auction when people have fi- found them. Um, I, I think the thing is, is that the company, and this is interesting too, because the the company that um, technically still owns them, and I don't know, you know, um, maybe there's something about, you know, the time period where they don't technically own them, you know, own them in per- perpetuity. I don't. I don't know marine law well enough to know. But nonetheless, um, the company that owned them was apparently giving out rewards for people who found them. Um, I think as maybe in, in as part of this scientific um, experiment. And um, it's, you know, this is a fascinating story. And so I was thinking about how how could we think about our lives or ourselves as friendly floaties and how, what does it mean to be flotsam in life and to be in the currents of life? I think this is part of the theme of letting go that we've been developing over the, uh, at the beginning of 2024 here. And I think that that theme is reflected in such cards that we draw as, you know, everything that happens to us only partly our doing. The friendly floaty situation takes that to its extreme and says, actually, in the case of friendly floaties, uh, you know, what, what is their doing in this? And it's very minimal because they're not able to, you know, the ocean currents are are much more powerful than friendly floaties. In the same way that global currents are much more powerful than any of us individually. Our jobs, our work, the labor market, the, you know, just, you know, since, since we've talked so much about life and work on Life's Public Buffet, thinking about the, those global trends are more powerful than any of us individually. And so we're always swept up in the same way that the friendly floaties are swept up in currents. And there are some floating around right now. Who knows? Maybe they, one will wash up uh, in, 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 on a shore near you. And if they do, please let me know because I would love to hear it. Uh, and so allowing ourselves to float, to have that lightness and the buoyancy. thats We don't talk about it too much on Life's Public Buffet is buoyancy. But today I really think that's what this is about. Having that buoyancy in life to be able to float on the currents not paddling against them, not trying to say that we're outside of the currents, but being in those currents and understanding that is liberating because it leads to an understanding of how our lives work and how the world works and how our lives work in relation to the world. So let's draw a card in honor of our friendly floating friends. And I'm going to have to change my way of uh, way of doing the ritual chant because it's going to have to involve yellow yellow how about this okay here we go yellow ducklings red beavers green frogs blue turtles okay I should really pick four cards but that's this episode would be two hours long Here's the card. No, oh, it's card 32. The back of your mind has a full-time job. Wow, how many times am I going to draw this card? It's our new passions are for hobbies. So ask yourself <laughs> a question to solve. Then refinish a chair or run an errand or take a walk. Or go to the shore and see if you could find a, a friendly floaty <laughs> at a shore near you. And while you're trying to, while you're looking at the shore for a friendly floaty, allow allow the back of your mind to solve the problems that the front of your mind is so struggling 
to find answers to. And I promise, even if you don't find a friendly floaty, that's hard to say, you'll find a way to keep floating on in your life. (laughs) 